In the last video, we added two-factor authentication to our Laravel Fortify powered SPA. Now let's add the registration feature so that the users are able to create their own accounts themselves. I will show you how easy and simple it is to enable the registration feature on Laravel Fortify. I have already added the registration page which doesn't do anything at the moment, it's just the UI part. As you notice I added the create new account link here on the sign in page and if you click it it takes you to the registration page which basically is pretty much identical to the login page just has additional fields. The component itself is very identical to the login component. We have some additional fields on the form, those are name and the password confirmation and password confirmation needs to be in this format and I will explain why that needs to be in that format in a minute. So let's switch over to the API and see what we need to do to get this working. So on the API side, we need the routes, right? So let's scroll down and here are the registration routes. I'm going to copy those and put it right on top of the auth sancto middleware group. Let's import the controller. The first endpoint we can actually delete because this just renders the view and we are not rendering anything on the Laravel side. So we can remove that. Now for this route to be registered, the registration feature needs to be enabled on the Fortify config file. So if we open the Fortify config file, we see that we can enable and disable features here. We enabled the two-factor authentication in the last video, and now we just need to enable the registration feature. Before we add this to the SBA side, let's go ahead and see how the registration actually works. So let's open the store method, and we see that it uses creates new users contract to create the user. And after user is created, it dispatches the event registered. And you could listen in on this to send out welcome emails or perform any actions that you need after the user is created. And then it logs the user in and returns the register response. Anywhere you see these uh, contracts, that means that you could create your own implementation and then bind it in a container. And then you will use your own class instead of the defaults. For now, we're going to stick with the defaults because we just have the name, email, and password fields. If you have extra fields or if you have different kind of fields, then in that case, you might want to create your own implementation of it. The default implementation is actually within the actions directory that was published when we installed the Laravel Fortify. It's within create new user action here. So if we open that, we see that this implements the creates new users. And if we open the Fortify service provider, and we can see the create new user action is specified here, which means that you could replace this with your own class. Same goes for other actions. So let's close this. The create method is actually very simple. It just validates the fields and creates the user. The only validation part I want to go over with is the password validation rule. So if we go here, we see that it uses a new password rule and then confirm. This one is just some of the default rules uh, that checks the minimum length, if it contains certain amount of characters and digits and so on. And the confirmed rule, if you don't know, you could go to the Laravel docs and search for the validation and search for confirmed. And here we see that if the field under validation is password, a matching password underscore confirmation field must be present in the input. This is why our field is called password confirmation on the SBA side that I showed you before right here. So let's go back to the SBA and let's make the post request to the register and that should be it. So in here, I'm going to copy the sign in uh, API requests and we're just going to replace the login with the register here and we can get rid of this 2FA part. And we could also do with this and that's it. So let's go over this to explain what's happening. The first thing we need to do is we need to make a get request to initialize the CSRF token. And the reason we need to do that is because user might come to the create new account page without hitting the sign in button. That means that the CSRF token was not initialized yet. And if they try to register and if we don't make this request, then the user does not have the CSRF token and they will get the CSRF token mismatch error. This is why we need to make this request initially before hitting post request to register. After the CSRF token is initialized, then we make the post request to the register and the user is created. When the user is created successfully, that user is logged in at the same time on the server side. Now we need to let our SBA know that the user has been logged in and log the user in on the client side. 
we do that by calling this client side login method which basically just sets the cookie to true and redirects user to the dashboard page we went over this uh, utility function uh, in the previous videos so this looks good uh, if there is any validation errors they will be logged here so we could also do alert errors zero so we can just alert the first error so let's test this out so i'm going to use the form filler to fill the form and i'm going to make this an invalid email and i hit register and we're getting the invalid email uh, error message now i'm going to make one of the passwords not match that also works so let's actually add the correct values now and hit register and that worked the user has been registered successfully and if we go to the account settings we see that the user email and name is correct so this is pretty much it we've enabled the registration feature using laravel fortify on our spa this is it for this video thank you for watching please hit like and subscribe and i will see you on the next video where we will continue adding rest of the laravel fortifies features to this spa